Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, tonight's uh, regular board meeting of the uh, village president or mayor and board of trustees. Uh, today it is December 14th. Uh, the first order, first order of business, of course, is our Pledge of Allegiance, and tonight we're going to be led by a student from NM Jeans. Uh, her name is Kaya Airy, and uh, she has a According to her principal, uh, Adam Parrott Sheffer, she uh, loves her do two dogs, a chihuahua named Dino, and a wiener dog named Jerry. Her favorite subject at school is reading, and one of the best books she read this year was Watch Me Grow, which is about a puppy. Uh, the, uh, uh, Kaya helps her dad fix things uh, and has the Im important job of making sure that her dad has the right tools for the job. Finally, for fun, she likes to play video games with Super Smash Brothers. Uh, a consistent uh, favorite. She's here tonight with her brother and sister, mother and father, and she's going to be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Thank you again, Kaya. Karen, may I have a roll call, please? Sure. Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Grasso. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Bolas. Here. Trustee Murphy. Here. Trustee Scalpa. Here. Mayor Straub. Here. First uh, uh, section, of course, is the residents' comments. Are there any residents uh, that would like to address the board at this time? We have a. Then we'll go with. Tom? No, Tom? You can, Tom, if you want to speak on the public hearing, you can wait till the public hearing. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mr. Gleason. Hi, I'm Marty Gleason. Can you hear me? Yes, I can sir. speak without the mic if necessary. No. Uh, I'm here tonight to uh, give testimony to a friendship with my friend Dolores Cizak. And a great citizen of this community for years ago, when they established a tax policy forum, I tried to get a number of citizens of Burr Ridge and others to uh, participate in that. It was sponsored by Jim Houlihan, the assessor of Cook County, and it went on for approximately a year and a half. And Dolores and I went to those meetings religiously to, to discuss reforms of the Illinois tax policy. So she's, she and I have been in the trenches working on reform and good government for a very long time. I want to make sure, because there are some people who indicate that it is not possible to be my friend if Dolores is my friend. I find that pretty un-American. And so I just wanted to bring that to the attention and establish that this is my friend. It has been on for a very long time, and I intend to retain that friendship. I hope nobody has to give up their friendship with me because Dolores is my friend. The other thing is a, uh, I would like to bring to your attention, as I did, uh, Mr. Mayor, that uh, the uh, a resident of this city, uh, village, I should say, Jerry Shea, passed away and you should read about him. He was a, a very big role to play in this state and the Illinois legislature and a lot of institutions. And he was a very long time friend of mine. The other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that I'm very concerned about the, uh, my, the other party which you belong to and I don't. I, I'm, you and I are precinct committeemen and opposite parties. And I heard something this evening. I got a call from the Irish American Society and they inform me that the candidate for president is planning to uh, deport all of the leprechauns in the United States. And I thought you ought to be informed on that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Are there, are there any other residents like to address the board this time? Okay. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion, of course. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so request, in which event it will be removed from the consent agenda. Under minutes, 
Uh, we have a 5A, approval of regular board meeting of November 23rd, 2015. Uh, we have 5B, receive and file uh, draft a hotel uh, marketing committee meeting of December 2nd, 2015. And C, receive and file a draft plan commission meeting of December 7th, 2015. Under ordinances, we have 6B, approval of ordinance authorizing the sale or, or disposal of property owned by the village of Burr Ridge, which has outdated police equipment. Under 6C, approval of ordinance amending uh, section uh, 8B1 of the Burr Ridge Zoning Ordinance to add uh, health and athletic club uh, with less than 7,000 square feet to the list of permitted uses in the B1 uh, district as E17-2015. That's text amendment B1 district permitted uses, which of course is at County Line Square. Uh, under, uh, under D, we have, a, uh, we have approval of ordinance granting a special use site plan approval pursuant to the Burr Ridge Zoning Ordinance to add parking to the County Line Square parking lot. That's number Z17-2015, 78 to 324 Burr Ridge Parkway, County Line Square cycle bar. Under 6E, we have approval, approval of ordinance granting variations from the Burr Ridge Zoning Ordinance. Remove. So okay. <coughs> Moved. And uh, 6F, approval of an ordinance amending the Village of Burr Ridge Building Ordinance to adopt the Illinois Plumbing Code and require water sense labeling as mandated by the State of Illinois. Under 7C, adoption of resolution vacating a portion of the public utility and drainage easement on, at 6679 Lee Court. Under considerations, we have 8B, approval of plan commission recommendations to grant a variation from uh, section uh, section 11C8 of the Burr Ridge Zoning Ordinance to permit the construction of additional parking in front of the building in variation from section uh, 11C11A2C of said ordinance to permit parking along the south lot line located less than required eight feet from the sideline lot line Z18-2015 located 8310-8350 uh, Madison Street, McCormick, uh, that's LLC. Under uh, 8C, we have approval plan commission recommendation to grant uh, conditional sign approval as per section 5508B of the sign ordinance to permit a wall sign in addition to a ground sign uh, for the Estancia planned unit development. Under 8D, approval recommendation to award contract for janitorial services and 8D, approval vendor list to the amount of $519,000 $532.25 for all funds, plus $450,000 and $277.25 for payroll for a grand total of $969,809.50, which includes special expenditures of $29,925 to Patriot Pavement Maintenance for 2015 Crack Ceiling Program, $74,092.20 to Landmark Contractors, for 79th Street sidewalk extension, $22,956.35 uh, to Burridge Bank and Trust for principal and interest on hotel motel installment loan for the County Line Road Bridge Parkway landscape improvements. And I have a motion to accept the following items on the consent agenda. Uh, that would be 5A, 5B, 5C, ordinances, 6B, 6C, 6D, 6F, under resolutions, 7A, under considerations, 8B, 8C, 8D, and 8E. May I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Schiampa? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Grasso? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Bolas? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. 6 Would <coughs> you like to open up the public hearing? Officially? Uh, public hearing for the 2015 tax levy. Okay. Steve. Yes, the, the board recall that back on November 9th, um, you voted unanimously to direct uh, staff to um, hold a public hearing tonight uh, on the proposed uh, tax levy. Uh, what you see in front of you is uh, what was uh, proposed back on November 9th. <clears throat> a, uh, there's three levies within our, our corporate levy. The corporate levy, an amount of 200, extended amount of 276,991. Police protection levy, amount of 184,660. Uh, and the police pension levy, 
in the amount of $697,784 for a total of $1,159,435. So also bond and interest on the Lake Michigan water bond projects that's set by a prior ordinance in the amount of $520,655. These three levies combined um, uh, equal a 4.8% increase or $53,081 over the uh, prior year. Again, um, our estimates uh, are, are, are performed to um, uh, aim high so that we uh, capture all the dollars uh, that uh, are, are available. And also I wanted to show a comparison of last year <clears throat> between uh, 2014 actually extended and what we're proposing. Uh, you can see the police pension levy went up $128,543 with the tax going up $53,081. To make up that difference, there had to be a reduction in the corporate levy of $45,277 uh, and a reduction in the police protection levy of $30,185. Now again, will we get all those dollars? Probably not. Uh, but we do need to fully fund the pension number. So even if that pension number came in lower uh, than anticipated, we would fund it uh, totally. And so I anticipate that next year um, at least 75000 probably closer to $100,000 uh, will be, uh, will, the general fund will come in uh, about $100,000 less uh, in 16-17 than it did in 15-16. So we're going to have to make up that $100,000 some other way. Um, the police pension levy last year made up 50%. 51.5% of the total tax levy. This year it has increased to 60.2%. Be more than happy to answer any questions. Yes. Yes. Well, my five minutes starts with this. Okay. Um, this isn't the same as a. This is a same as the regular meeting, <clears throat> I mean it's a uh, public hearing, if you will. Is there a chance I'd have after other people speak, maybe a second chance? In other words, I've got two five-minute presentations. You have two five-minute presentations? I think we know your position, Tom. I, I mean, I think you can succinctly, you know. Well, I've got, I've got that. Within yeah, that I think I'm covering time. some things that I haven't covered before. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, to have copies, this is both presentations. <clears throat> my name is Tom White. I reside with my family in the Carriageway subdivision. I'd like to address the village's proposed tax levy. I'm not arguing about the actual amount of the tax levy, <clears throat> as I understand that the overall tax levy increase is limited by law to be no more than the cost of living, currently set at eight tenths of one percent. My problem is with the distribution of the tax levy. During the past five years, the police pension trust fund investment performance has outpaced the pension fund's 7.25 annual investment return assumption by nearly three quarters of a percent. And yet the pension fund's deficit has increased by 41%, no, 41% or $1.8 million, having grown to 6.3 million <clears throat> from the 4.5. We're now in the midst of a market correction with overall financial markets generally yielding negative returns year to date. <clears throat> the state of Illinois is in financial chaos and the state Supreme Court has ruled that the pension benefits for current and retired employees may not be cut further. So minus the village winning the lottery, things are only going to get worse for Burr Ridge and many other municipal police and, and fire pension funds. Village administration subscribes to the DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference philosophy whose aim is to provide that, is to prove that public pensions are unsustainable. In essence, the municipalities who have subscribed to this thinking have made a deal with the devil, that is the state, allowing their villages to spend beyond their current means, ignoring the inevitable. Our responsibility as a village is each year to pay the officer's salary and our share of their fringe benefits. Annually, we must contribute a sufficient amount to cover the cost of deferred retirement benefits associated with the officer's additional year of service. The police Pension's current share of the village's tax levy is once again insufficient, adding further to the deficit. When we ignore this responsibility by subscribing to the state funding plan, 
which the DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference has lobbied for. In essence, <clears throat> we are defunding the officers' pensions. We are walking down the same path as the state, and we all know how that ends up. Village administration <clears throat> should sign up for how to get the budget we need to prevent catastrophes, because one is truly on the horizon. When I recommend that the village increase the Burr Ridge Police Pension Fund component of the tax levy, I'm not asking the residents to pay more, but asking the village to operate within its means. Use today's revenues to pay today's expenditures, <clears throat> which include appropriately funding the retirement benefits that the officers have earned each and every year, as opposed to kicking these costs down the road. Pension Division of the Illinois Department of Insurance has oversight over all the state public pension funds requiring annual police pension reporting, which includes detailed asset and liability information. When in 2012 the DOI performed a limited audit of the fund, it found that for the years 2008 through 10, the <clears throat> village had violated, violated the Illinois Pension Code by underfunding a plan by 314,000. Statutes did not require the village <clears throat> to make the fund whole. And although the village disagrees with the exact amount, the village continues to ignore the issue. Water. An example of the village administration's <clears throat> police pension funding prejudice, if you will. Consider the proceedings related <clears throat> to last year's Burr Ridge Police Pension Fund tax levy presentation. <clears throat> the fund's presentation, based upon at the actuarial valuation, reported a growing deficit with expenditures exceeding revenues, meaning that the trust fund was being defunded. Village administration asserted that the fund's pre presentation falsely stated that there was a deficit, insisting there was a surplus which could be predicted well into the future. The mayor appointed another resident to replace me on the trustee as trustee on the pension board. At the same time, the village administration was in, in receipt of yet another pension funding violation notice dated November 5th, 2014, from the Department of Insurance, which stated between 2010 and 13, Village failed to make pension payments as required under the statutes in the amount of at least 425,000. Should be noted that the Village Administration responded on December 1st, 2014 to the findings, stating that they were based upon the fund's actuary's calculation, which under the statutes is allowed, and thus the Village was in compliance. Janu on January 5, 2015, the Departments of Insurance accepted the, the village's explanation and now considers the village in compliance. My reason for citing what appears to be a non-issue is this. Foremost, a lack of transparency. When the mayor receives such a letter, shouldn't that correspondence be dis disclosed to the village trustees, police pension trustee board, <clears throat> which I was there, we never heard about it. Minimally, minimally by acknowledging at a pu public meeting, shouldn't there be a correspondence item on every village agenda so that such things are reported? The fact that the DOI state minimum calculation is higher than the fund's actuary indicates the village is setting aside even less to fund our pensions than the state envisioned. Although since 2010, the village may have complied with the letter of the law, it has fallen short of the spirit, which requires prudent funding of the police pensions. If you question my loyalty to the village, consider the following. Government is perpetual. Administration is temporary and changeable. A man or a woman may be loyal to their government, or in this case, their village, and yet oppose the particular principles and methods of administration. Thank you. That's Thank the you first one. If I can make a second one, I would do that too. <coughs> no, you're already six, seven minutes into it, so uh, your, time, your time is up. So I can make it at the end of the meeting after you voted. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. I said, I, then I, uh, when there's the resident section at the end, I can, I can go over that one, even though you will have had your vote. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Are there any other residents who would like to, uh, like to discuss this uh, right now or address the board? Okay, it's at the board, it's at the board level now, trustees. Any discussion on this topic? Can we discuss what Mr. White brought up as notice of non-compliance? We're in compliance. Um, I think they didn't have all the information they were looking for, and once we provided it for them, they said we we're in compliance. I think it's a relatively minor issue. Mr. White's trying to make a mountain out of a molehill here. Um, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's a non-issue. As far as the finance director is concerned, it's a non-issue. And Steve, you, uh, also, there's also, as long as we're 
addressing his uh, his comments, saying that the <coughs> MMC is trying to prove that public pensions are unsustainable. Have you ever known that to be true? <laughs> that pensions are unsustainable? Or that the, the DMMC is, is, is willingly trying to prove that public pensions are unsustainable. It's right in, right in Mr. White's uh, statement. Well, have you ever known that to be true? I mean, it's, I mean, are, they, are they really trying to prove? I, I, I think it proves itself. Um, I think this is something that not only the DuPage mayors, but every council of government uh, throughout the state has been talking about for years. Uh, that, in fact, I remember talking about it 20 years ago when we were down in Springfield and the state continually added sweeteners to the pension system, and we, we used that exact term. It's not sustainable. Uh, back then, you know, we didn't have the problems we have now, obviously, because all this has now come home to roost 20 years later, uh, and just as we predicted, you know, that, that it would be. Um, but, you know, the problems that you know, are brought up every year regarding the pension fund are no different than every other community. Um, and we showed you, you know, the percentages that other communities are funded are very similar to ours or even less. Uh, and it's based on the fact that, that because of those sweeteners that were added several years ago um, and the cost of, you know, of salaries that have increased um, dramatically over the years due mostly to the, the, pen, uh, to the uh, unions, and so forth, and again, not just in Burridge, but you know, statewide, um, it's added significantly to pension costs. There's no question, I don't think there's any question, we're all in agreement that we are required to pay for the police pension. The question is, are we, um, in a, it per, I mean, is the village of Burridge in a position now, um, um, a, a good financial position in the pension fund? I believe that we are. Would we like to be 80 or 90 or 100 percent funded? Sure. Would that be better than being 71 percent funded? Sure. Um, but again, I think the easiest way to explain it to the public is that we have a number of priorities in this village. And I believe strongly, and I think the village board uh, concurs, that the number one priority is to provide services to the residents we currently have. And that means to balance the general fund budget. And that means within the general fund budget to have a police department and a public works department that provides services to the residents. Uh, that means that we have sufficient dollars left over to be able to fund a road program so we keep the streets uh, in good condition. Um, and so it's a question of priorities. Uh, and I believe the priority is, is again to serve the residents of this village first, knowing full well we have an obligation to fund the pension fund. Um, if, if, I, if I had all these extra dollars that I had no use for um, and there were, all the priorities of the village were met, then the village board, and I'd certainly present that to you, and we could talk about the idea of putting more money in the pension fund. I don't believe we have those extra dollars right now to do that. Um, again, even putting in the amount of money that is required under the state law <coughs> is still going to subtract $100,000 from the general fund next year. That means we have to make that money up somehow, some way, okay? Just by doing what, you know, we're required. If we were to do what the pension board wanted us to do, we'd have to find $300,000. We just don't have those dollars. Now, again, we have a fallback. We have equity in the general fund. Uh, if for some reason the sky falls and, and, and the pension fund goes from 71% funded to 60% or less, uh, and, and, and I don't see how that could happen in one or two years, uh, but if somehow, some way that happened, we have the fallback of using equity in the general fund and propping up the pension fund. But that's like the village's rainy day fund. And, and once you put it in the pension fund, it's gone. It can never be, can never be taken back. Uh, and it's the village's emergency fund, um, and I don't see the emergency right now to be able to, to, to force us to put it in the pension fund. Um, there could be other emergencies out there for which we would use those dollars. Uh, and until I see that there, I believe there's an emergency, um, I will withhold my recommendation to, you know, to do that. But again, just to let you know, we do have that insurance um, if we do need that. But, to take it out of the uh, the pension levy, I mean, excuse me, to take more money for pension levy this year out of the total tax levy, further reducing the amount of the general fund, further putting the general fund um, uh, behind, which means we may have to start cutting services. I can't recommend that. And do we ever find out where we where we compared other uh, 
to all the other villages and, and municipalities in the, in the state uh, well as a, as a percentage of funding no we haven't we're, I, we're never given remember no, we asked for that information I mean, yeah i think we, we actually got it but no we did i know some some villages are only 25 percent funded uh, but, but uh, I, I think of the villages that are doing uh, doing probably in the strongest position to to meet all the these requirements certainly burr ridge is uh, is right up there so well, we, we showed you that last time. I'm not sure I have that slide or not. Looks like Willowbrook is 81% funded. Willowbrook and Oak Brook. And again, you look at their tax base, uh, and you can understand why they may have some additional dollars to be able to fund uh, their uh, pension fund. But if you look at LaGrange, you look at Western Springs, you look at a River Forest, all comparable communities in the western suburbs. To us, they're all lower than we are. Um, so there are some better, so there are some worse. I'm more. I'm only concerned about Burr Ridge, and and again, I think we're we're in, in not great shape. We're in good shape, uh, and again, as we we've talked about uh, over and over again, there were many priorities in this village that have to be met for today's taxpayers, for today's residents, um, and, and when we do have additional dollars, um, you know, then we can talk about it. You know, remember last year we had a surplus in the general fund. What did we do with that money? We had other priorities. We had priorities for the road program. We had priorities for sidewalks. We wouldn't have been able to do the sidewalk projects that everybody thinks we should be doing without making that transfer. We wouldn't be able to do the 2016 road program that will be presented to you at the uh, next meeting unless we had made that transfer last April. Um, and, and so again, um, there, there, those are priorities. And again, I believe th those those are where the dollars should be going at this point and not into the pension fund. That's not to say that in the future um, there may be surplus dollars that we can talk about. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about in January this notion of a referendum um, to, um, to, to, to keep on the tax uh, bills of the residents the same amount that they're currently paying for the debt service on the Lake Michigan water bonds. The residents agreed to, by referendum to, to not be taxed by any more, uh, no increase, but actually pay the same amount. We could generate another 500 to $520,000 a year that would go in to the capital projects fund, which would then take the pressure off the general fund to be able to find those extra dollars to go into the capital projects fund, which then in turn, ultimately, when at the end of a fiscal year, when we do have a surplus and there are no other priorities, then we could be putting those additional dollars at that time into the pension fund. There's no law that says the only dollars that can go into the pension fund are, pension, are, are tax levy dollars. Okay. So again, if, if things go the way I would hope that they would go in the next year or two, there may be a point where, where um, you know, we'll be able to add more money eventually into the pension fund. But at this point in time, I just don't see that. The problem is the growing deficit. I mean, you fund, we fund it at a minimum level, which increases that deficit. So it, it's no different than paying the minimum on your credit card balance every month. That, that balance is just going to keep increasing. So, so that is the concern. And, and you're saying we do it for few, you know, current residents. Should We should take care of the needs of current residents. Well, my goal is to leave the world a better place for my kids, too. And, and I think that's all our goals. So it is a concern, and, and maybe we could look at it during budgeting time and see where we can move some dollars around. Or in our next budget, look at some spending cuts, possibly. Well, if, hey, maybe if, if, if the board feels strongly about that, it's something to consider uh, what Steve just brought up about uh, leaving the uh, uh, bond out there and not uh, retiring them and just renewing them. If you think that you know that's something that the people would go for, that'll generate the extra money that we can do things with. Uh, Trustee Grasso, we're revisiting uh, selling the pump station property, which I think we were hoping to have reappraised. Um, you know, that's a lot of money we we took off the table. Yes, and that, but that is a separate issue, and that pays for the police department. Right. Um, but at uh, least it's another. It's a debt that would be exhausted. Off You're right. the, Trustee you, Francis. Yeah, a couple questions. Um, Steve, how come we weren't not notified about this violation and noncompliance? You know, there's something that goes to the finance director. I didn't even know about it myself. He reports to you, though, doesn't he? He reports to me. Okay. I, 
you know, I, I don't think he thought it was that big of a deal. It was more of a question of, again, not them not having all the information. Well, okay. So and, and so, um, you know, he provided them the information. Uh, and, and, and then we, they were sent us an immediate letter saying we're now in compliance. Okay, so so it, it, I don't think it's any different than we get a letter from the EPA saying that we're not in compliance with the water regulations when, you know, when we don't send in the, the water information in on time or something, and, and then we do, and, and then they say fine. I mean, I think it's just a, a matter of course. I, I, we didn't think that it was any kind of an issue. Okay, well, yeah, reading into this, it talks about a... Uh, Total underfunding of $425,000 and $425,690. Um, and that was explained, that $425,690 was explained with more information? Yes. And I think, I, didn't I pass that letter out last time that we were in total compliance? I mean, just to show you that uh, that was a case, I think some of the trustees saw that. So, um, again, I, I think it's a non issue. So as far as everything goes, the state, insurance companies, whatever, we are we're in compliance. Obli we're in comp obligated to be compliance where we are right now. Correct. And that's why I say that six ninety seven, seven eighty four. We're not going to get six hundred ninety seven, seven hundred eighty four dollars uh, because we're going to get cut back. Uh, but we still have to pay the tax, the pension fund, six hundred ninety seven thousand seven hundred eighty four. And that's why I think that next year we'll probably be $100,000 short in the general fund. Um, and that's an obligation that we have to meet. Right. Trustee Brancis, any other questions? Not at this time, thank you. Trustee Grasso? No, thank you. Oh, President? Trustee Bolas? Uh, no. Yeah. Pardon me? No. Okay. Trustee Murphy? And Trustee yeah. I think that we've got to be financial prudent now. Um, I would love to do what the auditors are recommending to contribute to the police pension, but I think with our budget constraints now, we've got to do, you know, we'll look at um, what, what the minimum is. And I, I look at Willowbrook's funding ratio at 81%, but they've got um, a substantial sales tax base. They have uh, a Wilbrook Town Center that's 190,000 square feet. That's 99% leased. They've got a Target store that we all shop at. We've got Whole Foods. And those are things that, that, uh, that we don't have here. We've got more residential community. Um, and so we've got to work with what, what we have. Good. Any discussion? A motion to close the meeting, close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Grasso. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Schiappa. Yes. Trustee Francis. Yes. Trustee Paveza. Yes. Trustee Bolas. Yes. Okay. Public hearing is now closed. May I have a motion to open to reopen the uh, regular meeting? So moved. Second. All, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Nays. Hearing none. Meeting is officially open. We're going back to a joint of the ordinances. Under eight, under six A, consideration of an ordinance uh, levying taxes for all corporate purposes for the village of Burr Ridge, DuPage, Cook Counties, for the fiscal year uh, commencing on May first, twenty fourteen, and ending April thirtieth, twenty fifteen. I think that the, the year is wrong there. May 1st, 2015, and ending April 30, 2016. Give a little typo there. I believe. Yes. Okay, Steve. Yeah, well, you, uh, you have the information. Um, and we're just looking for approval of the ordinance. I'd like to make a motion to approve the ordinance levying taxes for all corporate purposes for the village of Burr Ridge, DuPage, and Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year commencing May 1st, 2015, and ending April 30th, 2016. Second. First, second. Roll call, please. Trustee Paveza. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Schiampo. Yes. Trustee Francis. Yes. Trustee Grasso. Yes. Trustee Bolas. Yes. 6 0. 
Okay, motion passes 6 0. On the considerations, uh, 8A, I'm sorry, we, I'm, we're on uh, 6E. This was, motion was, uh, or this uh, ordinance was taken off the consent agenda for approval of ordinance uh, granting variations to verge zoning ordinance to add parking. Uh, Doug? I, well, I, as soon as I, Trustee Francis pulled that off the consent agenda, I realized we forgot to put the no parking signs as a condition. That's my fault. I apologize. It's okay. So if you uh, just want to, I, I suppose, uh, add that into to a motion, uh, we, we can it's add It's already that. in the motion. Uh, you need to add it into the ordinance. Add it into the ordinance, I mean, right. And I want to further clarify that there are two existing signs. We are adding six. I would like staff to review their locations yes. prior to the installation. Now I'll go ahead and make that motion to approve the ordinance granting the variations for the parking lot based on the submitted um, site plan modifications. Okay. Second that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Grasso? Yes. Trustee Baveza? Yes. Trustee Bolas? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. 6 0. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Now under considerations. Uh, the consideration of plan commission recommendation to grant special use approval as per section 6B21 of the Burridge Zoning Ordinance to permit construction of an additional building for electrical substation and to approve variation from the section uh, 7B7 of the Zoning Ordinance to reduce the required front yard building setback at Z192015, 7100 Grand Street for comment. Doug? Thank you. Uh, this is Planning Commission recommendation to approve a special use and variation uh, to accommodate the conversion of the utility substation at uh, 7100 Grant Street, which is near the entrance to Harvester Park, the, um, the western entrance to Harvester Park, to convert that uh, facility into a smart substation. Uh, the conversion requires the construction of an additional building and a utility substation is a special use in the uh, existing R1 zoning of this property. Therefore, to expand that special use, they have to have a new special use approval. Also, they're requesting a variation for the setback of the building. Uh, the required setback is uh, 100 feet. They would reduce that to approximately 10 feet. Um, the Planning Commission determined that uh, the special use and the variation were justified. The special use, the, the existing use of the property is for a utility substation. This is a minor addition to that substation, so the land use does not change, nor does the character of the property change in any way. Uh, the variation was justified based on the uh, existing equipment on the property uh, dictates the location of the, uh, of the additional uh, building. Also, the uh, configuration of the property is unique in that um, it doesn't really share a front yard with other properties, so that uh, standard front yard setback really uh, does not have, uh, uh, is not as meaningful for this particular property given its configuration. Uh, the commission did recommend approval subject to several conditions, including uh, the replacement of the existing six foot chain link fence an eight foot high fence with solid slat screening to be provided uh, within that fence, uh, landscaping to be provided around the perimeter of the property and with the final fencing and landscaping plans uh, subject to staff review. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the reason why this wasn't on a consent agenda because it was unanimously approved by the, by the plan commission was I was concerned about the position of Commonwealth Edison with this uh, condition of replacing the six foot fence with an eight foot fence. But I just heard uh, this afternoon, late this afternoon, uh, from Commonwealth Edison uh, that they've, they've agreed to that. Um, and uh, so they will go ahead and, and change out their old fence and put in a new fence in, in, in eight foot. So that's you know, good news. And I should also point out, as I mentioned in the Friday memo, that um, we are only one of 10 uh, communities throughout the whole state of Illinois that are going to be receiving one of these smart substations. Um, this is something that when we first learned about it back in 2012-2013, we
we lobbied for, uh, we pushed for this, um, <coughs> and we were successful in, in, in getting this. So I'm very happy about that. I think it will certainly uh, provide additional reliability uh, for our electric system in the Burr Ridge. Tracy Russell. I should tell everyone that one of my sons works for Commonwealth Edison, but he has nothing to do with the substation, <laughs> derives no economic benefit from it. Um, but I just thought I should share that with all of you. Oh, good. I have a question. I'm a, I'm a combat customer. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Jesse uh, Murphy. How does the construction process impact the neighborhood and the park? Because I know a lot of families and kids come in and out of there to play the Baseball and soccer. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there'll be truck tra some truck traffic on 71st Street, but all the construction will be contained within their property. Okay, so you don't think it'll be an issue at all? I don't believe I don't believe you'll notice it. It's it's very minimal too. I mean, they they it's a the building is a little bit larger than a semi truck trailer, um, and so and it's a prefab building. So mm. they'll build a foundation, which they hope to do right away and then just bring in the building and set it on the foundation and that's it. So how long will it take? I, they've not told me a, a time frame, but the, the actual construction of the building, I don't think takes more than a few weeks or maybe a few months. They did mention at the Planning Commission hearing that the actual conversion to a smart station could take a few years. Oh, so that process is probably at individual residences, is that why? I, I really don't know the details. Okay. They mentioned that every wire and every yeah. connection has to be yeah. looked at and be either replaced or upgraded. Yeah. So it's very okay. detailed, lengthy process. Did they say when they were going to start? Uh, no, they didn't give a date. Although I got a call today from the or email from the engineer today saying they they wanted to get the foundation in before winter, before well, it is winter, but right away. Um, they're not sure if they'll be able to or if they'll have to wait till the spring. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion, questions? And, uh, maybe like the motion to, a, to a grant that consideration? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Scalpa? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Bolas? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Grasso? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Six zero. Okay, motion passes. Other considerations for announcement, deliberation, and discussion? No official action will be taken. Anyone on the board would like to mention anything under, at this point? Other than to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, which I'm sure you'll do. Pardon me? I said other than to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, which I'm sure you'll take care of. I'm sure we'd be happy to do all that. That'd be great. And uh, uh, we have another section for residents' comments. Uh, any, any residents that would like to address the board at this time? Mr. White? Even though I kind of feel like Don Quixote, I feel like I brought it up, so I wanted to do it. Uh, my name again is Tom White uh, from the Carriageway Subdivision. Annually, the village administration surveys the local police pension funds, which indicates the Burr Ridge Pension Fund is the third best funded among the 12 police pension funds for which they have data. And that we are talking about Illinois police pension funds, that doesn't alleviate my fears. I realize that most all municipalities would welcome the state's offer of legally shorting pension funds, using the dollars saved for other purposes. As I learned in kindergarten, following the crowd is not always the best path. The last meeting I mentioned that there's a lot more to comparing municipal pension funding than comparing a few numbers. In particular, I've compiled some numbers relative to Willowbrook, which shares borders with us. I selected them and Hinsdale because they were the two funds which reported higher funded ratios than us. I've heard from Willowbrook, but not yet from Hinsdale. Before looking at any of the data, I'd like to read to you from the village of Willowbrook's 2015 actuarial commentary. Despite the statutory language, which requires an application of the projected unit credit method, which is the state's minimum, if you will, we feel that funding under this method at the level percentage of payroll severely undermines the benefit security of the retirement system and transfers the payment of currently earned pensions to future generations of taxpayers. I'd like to interject that the other method is the standard actual actuarial valuation method, which is known as the entry age normal method. They go on to state that the entry age normal 
based police pension funding should be relatively stable over the lifetime of the plan, whereas under the projected unit credit, the pension funding should relatively increase over the lifetime of the plan. In essence, what they are saying is that our current policy of state minimum projected unit credit funding will result in future Burr Ridge taxpayers being penalized because today we have not set aside sufficient assets to cover the cost of today's earned benefits. Actuary's funding recommendation, which the village of Burr Ridge has, pardon me, village of Willowbrook has adopted is based upon the earned, I'm sorry, the entry age normal methodology. And in particular, their funding recommendation is the governmental accounting standards boards based recommendation. Now this is the actuary recommending it as opposed to the pension fund trustees. Um, they may have done that also. Commentary goes on to state though, though they don't agree with the projected unit credit methodology, they would be remiss if they did not, not advise their cli clients of the statutory acceptable calculation under state law. I provided some basic numbers for the comparison, which were on the flip side of this write-up, which include our state projected unit credit, credit based numbers and both the entry age normal and pro projected unit credit for the Willowbrook valuations. He did both of them for them. A uh, couple of comments based upon the data. Note that the investment rates of return are similar. The officer's pension contributions are the same. That's the reason why they're funded at 80% while we're at 71 is directly related to the differences in the village funding policy. Our minimum state contribution that is versus Willowbrook's GASB contribution. Note that in Willowbrook's projected unit credit valuation, the liability is one point, almost one and a quarter million less than the Willowbrook entry age normal valuation representing at a 4% lower funded ratio. Instead of 81%, it's only 77 when they look at it in terms of regular actuarial calculations. To me, that implies that our current 71, when you look at it in terms of normal actuarial concerns, is more like 67. So you can kind of see the, see the numbers there and you can see I presented the three and notice that uh, the state minimum value for them would have been 665. They're very similar to us, if you will. Um, but what they're actually, my understanding is they're actually levying is the 805, uh, which is their GASB <coughs> number. Ours would be 798. Thank you. And to your point, Mr. White, you said if Willowbrook can do it, why can't we? They're, you know, all villages are different. They don't have much of a public works department, and we do. They have a, they have drive, drive through restaurants, we don't, you know, there's, we're, we're gonna have disagreements and uh, we're, not, we're not all gonna be alike, so. Red light cameras? Uh, red light cameras, they, they you know, that's, that's, this is America and we have, a, when this, this, this board obviously feels differently. So thank you very much for, though, for your interest and your contributions, uh, we do appreciate it. Any, any other residents would like to address the board this time? Yes, I do, thank Now for uh, reports and communications from village officials. Anything special to note? Well, on the behalf of the, uh, of the board, uh, I would like to wish everybody a very uh, Merry Christmas uh, and a very happy and prosperous New Year. And, and uh, uh, of course, we're not, not, we still have one section to, to go through first, but I'd also like to remind everyone that there is no second meeting in December. Uh, so the next meeting of the board will be on January 11th. Uh, but uh, I, now we move on to the non-residents' uh, comments. Do we have anyone like to address the board this time? Good evening. Dolores Cizek, former trustee and former resident. First, I would like to rebut the comments of Mr. Straub at the last board meeting when you said that it has been 10 years since this was changed from village president to mayor. However, it was almost 50 years that the village had a tradition of having a village president. And not only is it a tradition, it's the legal way of doing things because all the legal documents, whether it is ordinances, whether it is minutes, whatever is legal, it is signed as village president, not mayor. 
I gave you a list of about eight villages uh, that uh, have a village form of government, and village form of government is a village president and six trustees. They all have a village president. Some are in, and there are many more, but these are just some that I know about. Some are in DuPage County, some are in Cook County. Uh, now, you said that this had been changed 10 years ago. That may be. However, it was an issue in the 2013 campaign. And as you recall, you may recall, when your predecessor resigned in December of 2012 because he couldn't have two uh, public physicians, uh, Sotokov was appointed the interim village president and he made it quite clear that if he was elected, he wanted to be village president, not mayor. The, <clears throat> there was no reason, no reason at all for this to be changed except that Grasso wanted to massage his ego. <laughs> and so does his successor. <clears throat> it creates confusion. Some papers refer to you as Mr. Mayor, and the Chicago Tribune on December 3rd, when it talks about uh, ballots being taken, uh, the candidates for county offices, former <coughs> Burridge <Burbank coughs> Village President Gary Grasso. So I'm saying that this creates confusion, the tradition should be restored. And I hope that over the holidays, some of the trustees will come up and bring this to the attention and get it on the agenda. Uh, there, yeah, there was no reason to throw out a 50-year tradition. When Muzak was on the board, he ran all the time as village president. He didn't run as mayor. And when he was on the board, he said, DuPage mayors and managers, well, then it should be mayor. Well, then your village administrator should be manager. He's not manager, he's village administrator. I think tradition is important, and there was no reason to change it. Um, oh, I want to go back a minute to, this is a new issue, priorities. What's up there? Mr. Stricker, what's up on the ceiling? Finish your comments, Dolores. You're running out of time. The priorities are lighting pillars on the yellow brick road uh, on the bridge over I-55. Is that a priority? We're spending $400,000 to improve the landscaping at the intersection over here uh, on which you paid tw almost $23,000 on tonight's vendor list. If you look at the agenda, <clears throat> was it a priority to remove the exposed aggregate uh, sidewalk around the village hall? This took place when I was on the board. That wasn't a big amount, but it was 23,000. It all adds up. Was it a priority to spend half a million dollars to landscape this median <clears throat> one block from 76th Street to 77th Street. And I don't know how many times that's been redone. And the median north of I-55, are those all priorities? I don't think they are. Look if you don't, nice, don't, don't they, Dolores? If you don't properly fund the pension fund, you're gonna end up in the same pickle as Chicago and the state. But you don't wanna recognize that. <clears throat> Dolores, your, your, was, your, Dolores your, your time is up, but if you'd like to make some parting comments, if you'd like to include something like Merry Christmas to us, only that'd be great. A moment. I want to call to your attention an article in Time Magazine, December 14th, brick and mortar sales were down over 10% on Black Friday, but online sales were up 14%. And you will recall, when I was on the board, one of the things that I fought for and failed was that internet sales should have sales tax. They still don't have any sales tax. 
Thank you, Dolores. Well, you can't blame me, Dolores. You'll have to blame the Congress of the United States for that. Dolores, at that time, we all agreed with you. Sure, Dolores, thank, thank you very much. And Dolores, and if you want to call me Mr. President, you're welcome to. I, I'm, not comfortable, I'm not comfortable with that title, but, uh, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with mayor. And, and we should also yeah. mention that, that when Dolores talks about a half a million dollars for, for the medians, again, all that money came from the hotel motel tax fund, uh, and, and those dollars cannot be used for pensions. And if we didn't have those dollars, we wouldn't uh, have uh, improved those uh, thank areas. You, thank you for that clarification, Trustee Grosso. I intend to bring our municipal code book to these meetings, so if anyone chooses to quote from it, we can very easily verify what the quote is. So let me start my first reading assignment here, and I'll read under elected and appointed officials, and A is the mayor or president. It starts off, and it says, as Dolores has said, the mayor is the chief executive officer of the city. The president is the corresponding chief executive officer of the village. The next sentence reads, the president, however, may alternatively be referred to as the mayor. So I have the book. If anybody wants to read it. Is, is, there, a, is, there, a, is there a number for that, uh, that, that particular page? Or, well, it's or page code? 102, chapter 5, okay. number 1, municipal officials A, the mayor or president. Perhaps if you have an extra one, perhaps you can provide it. To yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Motion to adjourn. May I? Uh, I would like to wish everyone again a Merry Christmas. Merry, very Merry and blessed Christmas. And I uh, hope that you join us again on January 11th. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Trustee Bowes. Yes. Trustee Paveza. Yes. Trustee Grasso. Yes. Trustee Francis. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Schiampa. Yes. Six zero. And once again, thanks again for joining us, and the meeting is officially adjourned.